Welcome to the Performing Arts Medicine Symposium Abstract Tutorial. This tutorial will focus on the PAMA Research Presentation Abstract. The Research Presentation Abstract is designed for works that are primarily hypothesis-driven and involve data collection, an intervention, and an analysis or synthesis of the data based on your hypothesis. This research can be in any of the scientific disciplines including, but not limited to, basic research, applied research, clinical research, and descriptive science research. Studies using robust qualitative inquiry methods are also appropriate for this type of abstract. Before going further, if the focus of your presentation is primarily to educate the participants about a certain topic or to present a case study or case series, please go to the Educational Abstract Tutorial and the Educational Abstract Form. If you are interested in presenting a workshop, please go to the Workshop Abstract Tutorial. It is very important to note at this time that PAMA will not accept any abstracts that contain or may be interpreted as containing an attempt to promote or sell any specific company, product, or service. If you are unsure if your abstract is appropriate for submission, please feel free to contact our research committee chair at artsmedresearch at gmail.com. At this time, we will go through the research presentation abstract. Please note that there are two items listed here. The first is a worksheet, which you may choose to download and work from prior to clicking on this second link which is the Abstract Submission Portal. We will be going through the Submission Portal in this video and ask that you use the worksheet to guide your preparation before submission. Link, you will need to provide the author's name and contact information. If the primary author is a student, please be sure that you click on the hidden box to include their institution and year and major. For professionals, please add your title and affiliation. If available, upload the primary author's CV at this point. This is required even if the primary author is a student. This will not affect our decision to accept your presentation, but it is something that is required of accepted presentations and would be one less thing to worry about later if your abstract is accepted. On the next page, the same information is requested for any of the co-authors who should be listed on the abstract. This is optional as you may be submitting an abstract without any co-authors. Having this information ready before submission will expedite the process. You may add or remove co-authors after acceptance as necessary. The next page is the abstract submission. Please verify that you have selected the correct format at the top of the page. Please start by selecting the appropriate artistic category that pertains to your presentation. You may check all that apply as necessary, as this information is only used for sorting purposes. If none of the categories fit your presentation, please select Other Type of Artistic Category and type in the Artistic Category here. Next, select your preferred presentation format. Please select oral only for your work to be considered as a podium presentation. Please select poster only if all you want to do is present your work in poster format. This year, we are featuring a poster presentation competition. All presentations accepted for poster format will automatically be entered into the poster competition. There will be monetary awards for first, second, and third place winners, 
which will be announced during the business meeting at the end of the symposium. Despite indicating a preference, please then also indicate whether you would be willing to be considered for another presentation format under the submission format change. Although you may feel strongly that you want to do an oral presentation, there are times that an abstract review committee may feel your work is extremely valuable but more suitable for a different presentation format. This may increase the likelihood of your abstract being accepted as there are limited slots for each format. If you are willing to be flexible about the presentation format, please select yes. If you are not willing to be considered for another format, please select no. Lastly, for this upper section, it is important that you provide information about the ethical or Institutional Review Board approval status for your project. The abstract will not be reviewed if this item is not completed. You must indicate whether Ethical or Institutional Review Board approval has been granted, is in progress, or is not needed. With rare exceptions, this approval is required before conducting hypothesis-driven research. If you have any questions regarding the need for approval, we urge you to check immediately with the Ethical or Institutional Review Board at your institution. They will be more than happy to advise you if review and approval is needed for your project. It is unethical to conduct, publish, or present research studies without this review. Please note, in the United States, projects that are exempt from this process must still be reviewed to confirm exemption, and a letter still needs to be provided to validate extent exemption. While you may believe your project is eligible for exempt status, the review board at your institution may disagree and ask that you submit for expedited or full review. Only the board can verify the appropriate decision and only the approval letter indicates the project has appropriately undergone this process. In addition to your selection, you may provide the approval or exempt letter by uploading it here. Though it is not required, you may ask, be asked to provide this information during the review process if the research committee requests this information. The following section on this page are fields for the abstract submission. These sections, including their instructions, each correspond with the worksheet that is provided on the main page. Please note that the combined word count for all of these sections, excluding the title, must not exceed 350 words. You may note the word count while preparing your abstract on the worksheet. It is extremely important that you do not include any of your biographical information in any of the following sections. Your abstract should be blinded, meaning there should be no identifiable personal information in your submission. This includes items such as your name, your university, the name of the organization for whom you work, and the name of the city in which the study was performed. At times, this is surprisingly difficult to do. A hypothetical example would be, I am Ann Smith and a student at the University of Chicago Dance Department, and I performed a study on the functional outcomes of labral tear repair on dancers in the Chicago Ballet Company. It is more appropriate to state this information as follows. The study was performed in a major metropolitan city by a university-based research team on members of a major metropolitan dance company. The first required field is the title of the presentation. This title should tell the audience what your study is about and your conclusions. This title can be catchy and provocative, but should truly reflect your findings and not exaggerate your findings in order to be attention grabbing. For example, a study that involved hearing screenings for voice teachers and students could have one of the following of two titles. A factual title such as Hearing Screening of Healthy Teachers of Singing and Voice Students at a State and Regional National Association of Teachers of Singing Competition 
or a catchy but less informative title such as Can You Teach It or Sing It If You Can't Hear It? An obviously exaggerated and slightly misleading title such as 50% of all teachers of singing and voice students have hearing loss should be avoided. The next item is the rationale for your presentation. This paragraph should synthesize information on the importance of this type of topic and include historical information, literature, and other information that makes your project compelling. Again, no biographical information should be included. Next is the purpose of your presentation. This is your hypothesis or purpose statement and should state your main goals and what you intend to convey during this presentation. The next item is the methods. This section should include information on the study design employed for your research. A description of the participants which details all information relevant to the study should be stated. Your section should detail information about any interventions or measures and the data collection procedure. Lastly, data analysis and statistical methods should also be included in this section. The next item is results. This section should summarize your findings and correspond with the methods that you presented above. It is not sufficient to say the results of this study will be presented. You should indicate expected findings and preliminary data. The last item is conclusions. In this section, the significance of your results should be stated. Additionally, clinical implications of these findings to the problem or field at large should be stated. Limitations of your study should also be addressed and suggestions for further research or work should also be mentioned if applicable. As previously mentioned, PAMA will not accept any abstract that contains or may be interpreted as an attempt to promote or sell any specific company, product, or service. We require that all submissions certify that all presenters will abide by this statement. Presentations will be vetted for this content and an acceptance may be revoked if the presenters do not comply. This is a scientific symposium and presentations are to be related to the dissemination of scientific knowledge. Upon submission, you will be redirected to another page to the Conflict of Interest Reporting Form. This Conflict of Interest Reporting Form allows PAMA to submit our content to professional organizations in order to apply for continuing education credits. On this page, you and all of your co-authors will be required to disclose any conflict of interest. Each author or presenter must complete their own COI form. You must indicate whether or not you will be able to provide an unbiased presentation, have any conflicts, agree to disclose unlabeled or unapproved drugs or products in your presentation, and report your NPI number. You will provide an electronic date and signature at the bottom of the form and click submit for the final submission of this entry. If you have any further questions about submitting an abstract or need extra guidance on making the appropriate selections, please contact our research committee chair at artsmedresearch at gmail.com. Thank you.